All right, hopefully you cannot see my pajamas because I am not getting dressed. <laughs> hey everyone, so today is a little bit of a different video for you guys. It's uh, something a little special, something I've kind of hidden from you guys, I'm not gonna lie. It's been about a week and a half since I've gotten this. You might be able to hear it in the background. You guys also might be able to see it around my arm down here, but um, I got myself a 3D printer. This thing is freaking amazing. Introducing the Flash Forge Finder Lite. This is a 3D printer. It is a really, really cool machine. It's very inexpensive. That's like the number one thing about it. I love that it's very inexpensive. Because let's face it, cosplay is expensive and I don't want to add to that already incredibly high list because I got some more money. All right, so this printer is a bit of an older model. It is not the new model that they have. They do have an upgraded version of this. I got this one off of Amazon and it came to about $373 Canadian, which is a very, very cheap printer. I'd say about a year and a half ago, my brother got one from Amazon as well, but it was made in China and it really was just like the crappiest crap you ever could. Plus you had to put it together. This one, I opened the box, I put the power cord in, I uploaded the filament and it worked. I printed day one. Literally within the first half an hour, I had this thing printing and that was just me making sure that I had everything done correctly. And honestly, you could have it done in two minutes and this thing would be printing right away. So right now this is actually printing something and you can barely hear it. I can technically have this in my room and sleep. I'm normally a person who likes absolute peace and quiet when he tries to sleep because I normally just cannot fall asleep if there's a, a bird chirping, right? This thing is actually incredibly quiet, especially when it does the uh, hexagons and the outer perimeter. Once you get to small defined parts, this thing does move around and you do tend to hear the belts and stuff a little bit more. But even then, if you're like a, someone who doesn't really care about like noise or someone who prefers to have noise to go to sleep, this thing will be perfect for you. All right, so a few more details about this. This only prints in PLA. And the main reason that that is the case is that it does not have a heated bed. Other printers that are a little bit more in price will have a heated bed and that you are able to use like ABS on as well as, what's the other one? You can also use PET G on this, but unless you really want to print food grade plastic, just stay with PLA. It's pretty inexpensive, it's very cheap, uh, very cool to use. I have two of them actually down here. I have another one off to the side here. It just uh, you know comes in this little neat box. Let me actually open it up for you guys here. It's, uh, so I got this again off Amazon. It was $32, I think, 32 bucks. So that's one kilogram of printing right there. This will be able to print roughly, if you want to think of like item wise, it will print about 100 to 120 centimeter sword, like thick too. Like let's, let's say this wide by about of this size, about eight long, six long six or seven long of these. So like it's actually a pretty decent amount of size. Like I've already used through about one of them and now I'm on my second one. This is the third one. I have two more at another house. So I got lots of filament, which is fantastic. As of right now, I haven't had any single problems with it. Um, so because this thing does not have a heated bed, they supply a little glue stick for you. This is just a disappearing purple glue. You can use any glue. It does not have to be this brand. It does not have to be the one that they provide you with. You can go to the dollar store and get glue. That's what I did. But this thing works pretty well. Um, I find that if you do not put a um, base coat around it, it's called a raft, then it does have difficulty staying to the bed, which means that it will like rise a bit. I actually have a part that I can show you down here. Let me see if I can uh, get this on camera. So as you can see, it's not completely flat. See this side is not flat and then this side is flat. So you can see that it really did warp the bottom of it. I mean, it still looks totally fine on the top. It's literally just the bottom of it. So if I were to sand this down and shave off about maybe like eight millimeters, this thing will be totally fine and totally usable. But when I 
added the raft on it. So this is the same piece, just with a different filament. You can see that the bottom of it, it is totally flat, totally flat, perfect. So definitely if you're gonna be using this printer and printing flat pieces with it, add the raft, it is the easiest thing to take off. It comes out, comes out like this, a very like soft plastic. It's very, very smooth. So it just basically sits on top of it and then you just pull, up, you pull it off with your hands. Basically it creates a little layer on the bottom here. You can see it's like a very thick layer and even this is like pretty movable. Like it's, it, it's very bendable. And that's because this is supposed to be like the base layer where it uh, just sort of sits on. See how it just, so that, that's the, the first layer and then does two small layers and then it really just kind of like melts the bottom layer so it can uh, be a nice flat surface for it. And that's just to allow it to bond together with the plate because it has something to attach to. And if anything were to warp up, it would be that. So it just stops it from warping, which is a really beneficial thing and saves you a, a six hour print. Cause the worst thing is uh, printing something for six to eight hours and then coming back and it's like, hmm, but that's warped. Shit. So the entire printer has this little touch screen right here. Everything is done on this screen. I'm currently printing something so I cannot show you that, but I will link a, li a video to the sort of maintenance of it and going through the entire screen. It's a very simple design though. You don't need any sort of prior training or any prior printing experience. Again, it's, it's, if, if you can use an iPhone, you can use this. Simple as that. The only real difference between this one and the Finder, so this is the Finder Lite. There's a Finder as well. It's about $40 to $50 more. And the only di key difference is there is a USB on the Finder. So that will plug it into your PC so that you're able to transfer files that way or it also has a Wi-Fi feature where you can Wi-Fi directly to your PC so that you can print from your PC wirelessly to your printer. Now that does require internet, so if your internet goes out at any time, I'm assuming it will also stop the printing process, which to me is a very scary thing. So this one just has an SD card and you just take the SD card out, put it in an SD card reader, USB thing, plug that into your PC, download the files on it, take it out, put the SD card in here, walk away and just let it print. The printing times for this is decently long. So like, don't expect your uh, whole gun to be done in 20 minutes. <laughs> It ain't gonna be like that. So this right here is a piece I made because I wanted to make a little bird orang for my Nightwing suits. So the two of them took about four and a half hours. So one would take about an hour and, or sorry, about two hours, two and a half hours. So I mean, it's a decent amount of time. The only thing I really have to do with it is sand it down a bit and then uh, paint it. Now, you may be thinking like, oh, that's actually a pretty decent sized print. Let me get real close here and see if you guys can see the middle. So that right here means it's two prints. I glued this together. This side, you should be able to see the glue a bit more. So again, you will have to glue them together with this machine because it is only about a 14 centimeter by 14 centimeter? Yeah, 14 centimeters by 14 centimeters by 14 centimeters. So it's not the hugest surface. If uh, you get a different printer, it definitely will have more, but again, you'll have to spend more money on it. This one is a very inexpensive printer and I have found that it is very, very user-friendly. This is great if you wanna cosplay or start your own small business of 3D printing props for customers. Very simple, simply learn how to do some sort of modeling. That's a, probably like a, a three hour course on YouTube and it's free. You have the time right now, take the time, learn it, get a printer, print your own props, sell your products. You can even just make the files and sell the files because then people will just print it themselves. So I mean, there's two ways you can make income there by selling the files and selling the actual physical product. If you don't want to actually have a printer yourself, you can just make the files and sell the files. Again, it's some side money for you just to make cosplay a little bit cheaper and a little bit more affordable and just a little bit more fun because it really does uh, help you push projects. Like if you know that 
30% of your costume is going to be made with you doing nothing, that takes the toll off so much. You're like, hmm, I, I, I can take on a bigger project. I can take on an Iron Man suit. I can take on this prop because I don't really have to do anything. All I have to do is put it together, glue it, sand it, paint it. It's not that much process when you don't have to do the physical gluing of the foam itself to everything and just making it all yourself. So it, it does save you a lot of time. And honestly, it's a very satisfying thing to watch. I mean, that's how you lose time, but for your first print, you're probably just gonna watch it because I did. And that was like a two hour print and I just sat there for two hours and watched it because it's very satisfying. Like, it's just so cool. So this printer uses 1.75 PLA uh, filament and the only difference is that there's 1.75 and 2.35 I believe it's 2.35 it, it's 2 point something but regardless you can only use 1.75 so do not buy anything else this is part of a new project that I'm doing it is going to be the arcade ribbon skin the sword is already all printed I just got to assemble it paint it sand it you know the whole process um, and then make the rest of the costume but again this saved me so much time now time wise how long did this take to print? I'm glad I asked. This took the entire sword 75 hours. And you might be thinking, you know what? That's a long freaking time. And it is, it is a long time. But again, that's three days. That's three days because you can run this thing while you're sleeping. I did, there's, good thing I cut that with my foot or I would have to print it again. Cool. Um, yeah, so this print, that, that print ran for about 75 hours. I ran them overnight for three days, 24 seven, sorry, I guess 24 three. Um, and honestly, I didn't have a single mess up. Now, granted, I did mess up on the previous print where I didn't have the raft on it, but as soon as I put the raft on it, every single print was totally fine, came out perfect. And again, I just gotta glue everything and it's done three days and I have a sword. All right, so this is something I made for my girlfriend. This is a Rapunzel cookie cutter. So again, you can cook stuff for just everyday household items. Obviously it still has to be uh, sanded and stuff. There is some loose ends on it, but that'll take like two minutes to clean up. This is a very simple design. This one only took about an hour and a half. This was also when I didn't put a raft on it, so it is a warped on this side. Honestly, it's not bad considering it did not have a raft. If I really wanted to print it again with a raft, I could, and there would just be a lot less cleanup work on it. So I might even do that, but regardless, hour and a half to make this, not too shabby. All right, so this is um, another print that I've shown already. This is the one that I just finished. This is the Nightwing Birdarang. I made two of them. Uh, where's the second one? On the floor. All right, right there. So there's the second one there, as you can see. Print. You just glue them together in the middle and you got two Brita rings. Now I wouldn't go tossing these at people because you know they could break and you'd have to then figure out how to fix that, but they're pretty, pretty durable. All right, so another print that I've been doing because as you guys know, I have a lot of Spider-Man suits, which means web shooters. I've been printing a, a few web shooters. I have this one and I'm working on the the homecoming? Yeah, the homecoming one. So I mean, this thing took, again, I printed two of them, so one for each arm, and it took an hour and a half. Not too bad. I might, I'm, I might scale it up a bit because it is, it is a bit small for my wrist, but it's, it's not terrible. Again, I just gotta add a magnet on this side with a little elastic, put them on my wrist, and you know, done. And the last little print that I've done is the green lantern ring. This thing came out incredibly well. All right, focus on the ring. There we go. So this thing turned out phenomenal. The only thing I have to clean up is the bottom here. And again, that's just extra plastic that you can just break off. I broke off most of it with my hand. There's also supports that go up in the middle of it. Kind of hard to see where it is, but you can kind of see some, uh, some bumps in here. And that again was just the uh, support trees that go inside of it. And the cool thing about this software is that it automatically puts the links in for you. Which brings me to my next thing, the software. What software do I use? So this printer comes with its own software. It is called Flash Print. It is a very user-friendly 
software. You'll learn that thing in five minutes. I learned it in five minutes. It is the simplest thing to do. It has like four buttons on the side, three buttons on top, and your design. Very simple. The only thing you cannot do with it is design stuff itself in it. So if you wanna design your own things that, that are still free, there's no reason to pay for software, especially when they give you good software. So a couple of free softwares that I suggest learning. If, choose one, you wanna choose them all. Blender, Autodesk 360, or SketchUp. Those are the only three that you really need to learn. Blender, I think, is the best one to learn because there's a little ball that you can like kind of morph into what you want. The only drawback with that is that if you design something that is like not possible to 3D print, your print may not turn out exactly like it. But if you make it so that it has the support beams, it should be totally fine. I have Autodesk 360. I've used it a little bit. It's like... If you've ever used Autodesk for anything, it'll be a very similar program. Um, but if you haven't, it will take a little bit of time to learn it. But again, there's free tutorials online everywhere for this platform. You'll find it and you'll be like, all right, there's, there's a tutorial. I'm just gonna watch this for a few hours, learn it. All right, done. Now I'll make my own stuff. Take the time, even if you just get the printer, download the software, choose a file that's already made by somebody else, print for three hours, watch for three hours. By the time that's done, you're ready to start designing, put on something else for another three hours and design for three hours. Six hours and you know how to use a program that is a very good program. You have two prints already done. You can start printing your one that you have just designed and then take the two that are already done, sand them, paint them and finish them. You could have three prints done in your first day and know how to use the, the software. And right now, if you order a printer, it's usually back ordered. Mine took about two weeks to get to me just because Amazon's overloaded right now. During that two weeks, you can learn so many programs and then choose your favorite. It's very simple. The only one I haven't tried is SketchUp. I, I hear it's very good and very user friendly. Um, so definitely take a look at it. They're all free softwares. So it doesn't hurt to download them all and just choose your favorite. I also have printed a little octopus that has dangly legs on it. So you can get very creative. You can print chain mail if you wanna do sort of like Renaissance and stuff. So it's, it's very cool what you can print with this stuff. Again, like chain mail. Chain mail is two pieces that are inside one of another so it can't un undo. So you can create very articulate things. So a question you might be asking, where do I get free files? Hmm, where do I get them? Patrick, well you fucking tell me. Guess what? No, nah, I'm just kidding, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. I get my free files from two places, Thingiverse and My Mini Factory. I will link both of those in the description as well as a site that lists a bunch of free and pay sites that you can get files from. Let's say you just wanna get something and you're like, I don't, I don't care if I pay $10 for the file, I want this Stormtrooper helmet to be perfect. Buy the files, 10 bucks. Print it yourself, it'll cost like 30 bucks. Paint it, 10 bucks. You got a Stormtrooper helmet for 50 bucks. So another option, if you do not want the Finder Lite, that's totally fine. Another beginner 3D printer that I would suggest is the Ender 3 Pro. My friend has just gotten this one. The difference is about $50. So the similarities of the two printers are just a few things. Number one is that it has the same SD card slot on the side, which then you put into your computer and transfer the files that way. Um, there are a lot of major differences. First one being price, it's $50 more. The second one is that it has a heated bed so that you can print PLA, ABS, PETG, and a few other filaments. Another one that is major in my eyes is that you, the customer, have to assemble it. So if you do not want something to assemble, get this one. If you want a little project before you actually start printing, buy the uh, Ender 3 Pro. I personally prefer this one because I didn't have to do anything with it. I am limited with only PLA, but that's a $50 difference. If I just sell enough to buy the Ender, I can then do that. 
That way I have a printer that can do ABS as well as a printer that can strictly do PLA. So it just gives me a little bit more options in terms of printing. I know their platform is slightly larger. I'm pretty sure it's only 15 or 16 centimeters instead of the 14. Um, one centimeter does add up over time. Even if you get up to a thousand dollar printer, you're only going to get about 18 centimeters max. So you gotta really decide what you're going to do because this one is a pretty small surface area in terms of printing, but like printing the size of your hand is uh, pretty decent. And again, you can uh, take this, print, 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 print. Because this thing is not 14 centimeters high, you can print four of these if you want to on the same bed at the same time. Now granted that would take about 20 hours. Another major difference between this one and the Ender 3 is that all of the hardware on this one is internal. Everything is inside. It even has the filament tray in the back here that comes out. I'm not gonna take it out because I don't know if there's a sensor on it. I'm not using it currently. As you can see, the wire comes down here and it's just sitting on a, a PVC pipe. You don't need to make a little thing with bearings on it. You don't need that. Mine's just sitting on there and it's been totally fine. Two bucks. It has even attached to two boxes. Like it does not have to be pretty, as long as it works, it works, you know? But that is going to wrap up today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave this video a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting the subscribe button. I make new videos every Tuesday and Saturday at noon. But thank you guys for watching and have a great day. Peace.